back into turn number one. Here comes Chase Elliott peeking out to the outside. He's going to slide up three wide. Goes to Alex Bowman to the inside. Hey guys, Mr. Griffith, and welcome to a video that I've needed to make for a very long time. This is sort of a behind the scenes on how I make some of my NASCAR stop motions. Now, I've been making stop motions for really four years now, and only recently have they gotten even decently good. So, uh, I thought might as well now uh, I'd show you uh, some of the behind the scenes and some of the things I do. Uh, first thing, uh, first and foremost, right here, you have to have a good camera if you're going to do really good stop motion. This camera right here is the Canon Rebel T6. I, sh I wish I had the, the T6i. So, if you're going to have good picture in your stop motion, you're going to have to have a camera uh, that's not an iPad or something that you film on. I mean, some people have some pretty decent cameras on their iPads and they're able to import those pictures they take on their into um, stop motion apps on their uh, portable device. But um, you got to do things externally if you want it to really, really stand out. So we make our way to the track table right here and I'm going to show off a couple other things. I have other I have another lens that I uh, use for long range shots. Uh, I also have um, a remote that I use. Uh, I used to have a uh, remote that didn't have a plug in, but it was very unreliable and usually I'm not too far away from the camera when I am make, taking still shots. I have a tiny tripod that I use for um, for anything I have elevated. Um, yeah, this tripod has been used, I believe, a couple times. Uh, I'll roll some clips showing you uh, which uh, shots I have done with this tripod and same for the monopod. One thing I also find very uh, useful is bright lights. That is actually very bright, but there are um, my umbrella lights I use. I have two of them right now uh, that I use to shine light onto the racetracks. Iowa will be a night race, so uh, this uh, behind the scenes video will be perfect for, yeah, for, for those who want to see how the light actually affects um, the video itself. One thing that is very important when you make a stunt motion is that you need to block out almost all natural light. Especially when you're going to do something like a night race, you're going to want to have t at least two light sources uh, to be able to uh, get multiple angles of the race cars so that you're not getting extreme shadows. And uh, the lighting is pretty good on the race cars. As you can see, um, lighting is good enough so the cars are pretty luminescent and the colors shine as well and you're able to see all sides of the race cars without too much trouble. Another thing you're going to want to do when you're doing stop motion is kind of frame everything. So I have a little white box right here that I use to for my autofocus. Uh, when I do stop motion I have the autofocus uh, option chosen and I choose one of the four boxes or oh, four points on the uh, little white square uh, to, to fix a position on one of the race cars. Uh, so that I can get a decently smooth picture and in post I'll be able to uh, move the camera around however much I want. Um, usually I could do some sort I could do some sort of zoom uh, or something in uh, while I am uh, filming, but usually everything is in post. And so to put it simply, you're really only going to want to move about that much per frame. Uh, recent races of mine haven't really been that way, at least with Texas. Um, but one way I like to look at things uh, when I do this is I look at the tire down at the bottom and I move about maybe a half a quarter to a half a rotation for one frame uh, depending on how fast I want the car to go. So it's so if he's here and I want to move him to another frame, it'll be probably right, right there a little further. Uh, that's probably uh, only how much I'd move the cars, at least this season. It's worked out pretty well for me. Let's see what happened. Oh man, looks like he cut across the 24's nose there, heading into turn number one, and that got his car uh, spinning. So of course, something I had to put in here was my damaged die casts. Um, I will show you how to make these in future videos, but as of right now, I will tell you all you really need is a hammer and some pliers, and that's 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 all I use for this. Uh, you do need a hard surface as well, like some concrete or something. So. Uh, it'd be fun to go outside and um, do this, but there is a method to the madness here, so I will have 
a full video for this at some point for season number six. Uh, but for right now, we have this uh, Stenhouse diecast, which is being used for Chris Buescher. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him back into the wall at some point. And so once I get all the stop motion complete on the video, I go into editing and I import every single picture into there. I make multiple segments of stop motion, just base segments. Uh, and then after that, I'll go in to the, well, what will be my main file, uh, which will have all of my extra uh, B-roll and pictures and uh, all, all the stop motion segments and all the audio and everything like that that will be put in after that. Uh, and then I start compiling everything together, starting with the introduction, and then I go through with all the video segments and all the pictures and everything up top first. And then you, usually I'll put in the first couple songs just to make sure uh, everything is working well and make sure that the length of everything is working. Uh, and then after that, I'll do my commentary after I get everything laid out. And then I'll make a couple changes here and there if I need to, uh, to the length of the video. And then after that, I will start adding in the background audio. And so basically what I use is uh, two songs. I use two songs for this. I use MDK's Super Ultra and Syndrome. Uh, those two songs, one for the main um, theme for this season and the starting lineup background music. And I also use a mixture of different crank it ups and ambient audio in the background from when I've been to Talladega and Atlanta Motor Speedway in the past couple years. You also hear some stuff uh, simply from Crank It Up. So you're going to hear uh, a short track uh, style, uh, speed, super speedway style, and a mile and a half style. Those are really the only three I use. Uh, so for Iowa, I would use the short track uh, because the engines uh, have a lower tone to them. So it makes the aesthetic to the video uh, a lot better and uh, it really fits the theme of uh, the track that they're race at, we're racing at. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the editing right here. As you can see, there's a little bit of stuff I'm working on, a little bit of cropping and framing and everything like that and that I do. Um, all my effects and everything that I work with. I, of course, as you can see, I work with Power Director. So there's a behind the scenes look at my editing. And of course, once editing is complete, you gotta make a thumbnail for the video. And uh, it's mostly just a base and inserting a couple pictures and figuring out what works best. So of course, there's the template I have with the six and the Mr. Cut Series logo on the left-hand side of the screen. Then I add in the racetrack and then the race logo that Macwell makes. And that's up in the top right-hand corner of the screen, uh, of the thumbnail that is. And yeah, so there's a little bit of trial and error that goes into making some of these thumbnails. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, and after a while, you start to realize uh, what works best in a thumbnail and what gets people to click on your stuff. He looks at the inside. He's going to move the two up the racetrack and turn number three side by side. Three wide now for second. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys on this DIY on how to make a NASCAR stop motion. Uh, I'm not going to show you a couple of things as of right now. I'm not going to show you how I make my tracks because I'm not sure if I want to show you guys how to do that because it's very simple how to do it. It's just chalk and a uh, styrofoam board and I'm not going to show you graphics because I'm not the one who does them that's Maxwell credits to him are in every single description of the Miscraft Cup Series races but uh, other than that hopefully you guys uh, uh, figured out a couple things learned a few new tricks that you might be able to try uh, when editing when filming or when setting up your race tracks uh, at least for lighting and maybe some of the equipment you possibly might want to buy in the future um, but once again uh, the quarantines really get to me with the haircut and the in the shaving so uh but we're still we're still rocking with the stop motion so hopefully you guys did enjoy the iowa race for season number six and uh yeah so hopefully you guys are excited for homestead i should have a couple more videos on my damage die cast at some point uh, i'm gonna be showcasing some and i'm possibly gonna make one where i show you how i make some of them so that's pretty cool so you guys look forward to that too but other than that thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you guys back on the racetrack peace